You gotta check out this new poll, How Americans View and Read the Bible. It'll shock you. What's Lifeway saying here, John? Lifeway just came out with a That's new a research. That's bookseller. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, they just came out with a new research, a new poll. Mm -hmm. And what they're stating, uh, based up in an article in, in the Christian Post, is that one in five Americans have read the entire Bible, and most call it a good source for morals. So, so, so you pull that image down. So you're looking at that they did a survey. Right. How many people, how many people have read the Bible all the way through? Well, they let That's us what they're know saying. about they're that. They're saying one in five. Yeah. One in five has read it all the way through. Right, correct. But how many people today, I mean, this culture today, how many hmm. people have read a book? Not many. Yeah, right. In fact, they, they say if you read, after graduating high school, most people won't read a book, in, you know, a complete book in 10 years or something like that. You read a book in high school? No, after, <laughs> after graduating high school. <laughs> yeah. I, I just kind of skimmed through the pages. Do you pages. remember the first day in college? Like, oh my goodness. Are they serious? Can yeah. I read this? Yeah, right. And how much does it cost? Yeah, right. Somebody should read this to me, right? Lord, for, for that amount of money, yeah. Uh, no doubt. And so, but this is the thing about the difference in the Bible versus any other book. Mm. It's a living active word that penetrates our heart and spirit. It divides our thoughts and attitudes of our heart. It's living, it's active. Yes. It's not like just some dictionary or no, something. No, the author comes with the book. Exactly. So when we're not reading, one, one in five, basically four in five are not reading the Bible all the, way, all the way through, that they are not having that life in them. They're not yeah. having the life of the Word. Yeah. You know, there's life in the, the word, word of God. Yeah. You know? What else are they saying? Well, they're saying that 10% of the respondents read none of the Bible. 13% so they're not reading they're anything reading. at all. Okay, so, so 10% are not reading anything at all. Wow, of these respondents. Correct. I think the number's higher than that. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, of the respondents. Okay. 13% said they only read a few sentences. <laughs> okay. Isn't that what's on the signs in front of churches, yeah. <laughs> those few sentences? Just, just, just a quick blur. Wow, okay. 30% uh, said they knew of several passages of stories. Which is something that happened. David and Goliath, right, okay. nativity. So Noah, yeah. Noah and the ark. Noah and the ark. Moses and the ark. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just and so how many animals? Right. I, know. I was just joking. Don't lie to us. I knew it yeah, was Moses. 12% yeah, yeah. <laughs> read, read almost all of it. So you got 12% of the respondents almost read all of it. But overall, this is what they found. Only 20% of the respondents said that they read the entire Bible. She said, that's it. This makes sense because, you know, when America was first founded, the first book printed by Congress mm. and distributed was the Bible. Yeah. And why, the reason why you went to college, I believe it was Harvard and Yale. Oh, yeah. You had to memorize, you had to read the scriptures, and you had to understand it because our laws are, America's laws are based on Judeo-Christian principles out of the Word of God. Mm. I mean, the, some of the phrases that we use today, they, they're biblical phrases. When yeah. you think about the prudent man, you think about you know, the balanced scales, and you think about justice. Pick up the Noah uh, Webster Dictionary of 1828, yeah. and it's filled with scriptures. The we'll entire make sure that we have a link dictionary. available to yeah, it's that. It's amazing. You, you're, very, you're very, very right. And so you, you think about, so uh, even sanctuary cities, you know, we had a program on sanctuary cities, but we, it's the Word of God. If you're not reading the Word of God about it, you don't realize that God's in the sanctuary yeah. cities, but He has a different definition for what a sanctuary city is. And it'll yeah. kind of give you insight if you're a mayor, if you're a city council person, and you want to know how God would run a sanctuary city. He's into it, but he's into it differently than things that we're seeing take place in America. Yeah, this is what, what one of the, the executive directors of Lifeway Research mm -hmm. said. He said, most Americans don't know firsthand the overall story of the Bible because they rarely pick it up. Wow. He said the small percentage of Americans who have read all the scriptures is not for a lack of Bibles, because it's reported that nine out of 10 homes have Bibles in their homes. Nine out of 10. Nine, and the average amount of Bibles that they have at home is, are three, the, you know, three wow, Bibles. three Bibles, plus yeah. the digital versions are. Everybody has it then. Everybody I mean, has it. They have access to it at least. Wow. So they continue this research when they, they ask the question. Think about this, more people were hungry for the Bible when they didn't have it. Mm. But now that we have multiple copies of it, yeah. any way you can get it, it's like information overload, and because it's so, when things are so accessible, sometimes you take them for granted, or take, it's like, it'll be there. 
And it's like, yeah. there could be a book burning overnight. There could be a, you know, it happens. They're yeah. making things illegal in the European Union right now about different things about God's word and speaking freely. And, yeah. and Russia's having laws passed where you can't evangelize people publicly. Well, you, how about in China? We saw a yeah. video of, of yeah. the Chinese believers receiving Bibles for the first time and yeah. how they cherished it and began to cry when they right. actually got it, you know, their very own copy. Yeah, Brian Wilson just, just, just told me this, this Sunday maybe that um, there was this one man that had one page the book of Isaiah. That's all mm -hmm. he had his whole life. And he, and he won a multitude of people through this one page. One page. One page. And so he comes back to America and he looks at a, a pastor that has the whole Bible. And he, goes, he grabbed the Bible and he hugged the Bible, Brian said. And he said that, um, oh, you have the whole Bible. You must have won millions of people oh. to the Lord. Is that convicting wow. or what? And it's like, wow. Sometimes, you know, the feeling of, of, of like you're going to lose it. And people gave their life, you know, Tyndall. And oh, yes. I was just, just listening to a program that we did in America, how we got here and how we stay here. You need to hear that. You need to go to VFNTV.com and go to the torch and listen to that. Because that whole journey, people paid a huge price yeah. to get the Word of God in their hand, which the, 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 the consequence of that, the benefit was that, is America was going to happen because they got the Word of God. Yeah. It's, it's so important, and it makes me think about what's happening right now in Washington, D.C. With, mm -hmm. with Hobby Lobby, the founders of Hobby Lobby. Yeah. They actually personally had the very largest uh, uh, Bible artifact collection right. uh, in the world. Antiquities, yeah. Yeah, and so now they've actually opened up, or are about to open, the very first Bible museum in Washington, D.C., yeah. and it's state-of-the-art. It's amazing. I'm grateful for that, but it concerns me the fact that the Bible becomes a museum item. Yeah. People all of us start saying there's dinosaurs. And over here you can see the because they got, you know, the Smithsonian sure. that's across the street. Sure. And then I mean because some of the stats are saying the way that they see the Bible is that way. That it right. is an antiquity. It is a historical right. document. And it is, but it's more than that. It's living, it's active. I'm glad I, I appreciate I, I, I know what you're saying. But it was like just because it's in a museum, it still needs to be in your heart. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, they asked this question when asked to name the reasons why people don't read the Bible. Okay. They had some very interesting things to say. So these are reasons, this reasons why they don't read. They right. said that this, these people who... These were, respondents. 27% okay. said they simply don't prioritize it. 27%. Wow. Well, that's kind of life in general, isn't it, for folks? <laughs> and the reason why businesses fail is because of the priorities. Yeah. It's one thing we try to do at VFN Kingdom Business is to be able to... to you, you can find out more at vfnkb.org. But it's, it's a strategy, especially today with so much stuff hitting us how to strategize and prioritize your day. Because there's just, you could do a thousand things. It's amazing with today's technology. You could be so busy doing 20, 30 things, but you haven't done what's most important. Mm -hmm. And we teach that. It's actually for you. You can have it. It's value-based vision management. It's, it's for all of our VFNKB partners. And it's real simple to become one. Just go to vfnkb.org and you can find out the details. But you need to learn how to prioritize your life because if you're not prioritizing God, you're not prioritizing anything. Yeah. You know? And oftentimes what happens is what matters least always right. compromise the things always. that matter the most. It's so always. It's like you you got to make sure you get, you get the, the big rocks in. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Well, the other thing they said is that 15% said that they don't have time to read it. This is another th well, reason why they don't read the well, Bible. So everybody has 24 hours, right? Every, everybody, last time I checked. So when Jesus was walking the earth, did he have a different clock? I don't, I don't think so. How about Daniel? Nope. About Moses? Mm -mm. So they had the same 24 hours? Same 24 hours. We have so many distractions yeah. that suck our time up. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is comfort, convenience, and entertainment. Mm -hmm. Things that people, oh, I have to watch. That's a ball game. What do you mean you got to watch that ball game? That's not right. bringing anybody up any, any person. Oh, no. Saying, no, right? no. <laughs> That's a football game or baseball. Hey, so, <laughs> but yeah, but the, we're just, we're busy in ourselves. And I'm always conscious of that about, you know, what's, what's taking my time. Yeah. And people that are using their time for nothing will actually engage in your time and start using your time up. Mm -hmm. And I think you got to, you got to really focus on it. You got to grab time and force it to be in compliance with your destiny, what God's called you to do. And if you're not thinking you have enough time for the living, active word that's going to give you the secrets of life and how to actually live your life and the wisdom to run your business and yeah. marriage and family and government, you're missing out on the on the, the secret reality of God, the kingdom yeah. secrets. And the truth is, I think, and I'd love to hear your opinion, but if, if you're saying that you don't have time to read the Bible, right. 
that I think you're probably just in denial, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some other things that really need to be addressing because the truth is, is that if, if you want to read the Bible, we do the things that we want to do, right. you know what I mean? And so, But don't you think too, I know we gotta go to break, but don't you think that if you don't tell me the value in the Word, if you're preaching to me everything but how, this Word's gonna change my life, it's gonna, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna divide my thoughts and my attitudes of, of my heart. It'll let me understand even myself that you'll be blessed by hiding this word in your heart. You'll be a different person. Well, you'll know God. Yeah, you'll know God. That there, not only that you'll know about the Bible, but you'll know about the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it comes. It's the only book that comes with the author. Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, listen, we got more. We're going to share with you about that. As a matter of fact, we have statistics about. Uh, who who ha, how do they describe how how do people describe the Bible, and you think well, everybody describes it like me? It's not. There's a whole bunch of different ways people describe it. And that's why I was concerned about when I looked at the stat and putting the Bible in a museum. How people would begin to describe it as a historical document, which it is, but it's so much more than that. But join us at the break, and we'll show you. But now you got to see this: is how do they describe the Bible? Mm. How do people describe the Bible, John? What are they saying? Well, the, the highest percentage of people, the, the way the respondents said, 52% said it was a good source of morals. Right. Mm -hmm. 52%. So you're looking at, I can see it on the graph Yeah, there. 52%. So we just had an earlier program with all these artificial intelligence companies coming together, Elon Musk, Facebook, Microsoft, Bill Gates, and other ones, and they're wanting to, to find the number one issue they're going to deal with about artificial intelligence is morals. We can solve their dilemma. Yes. We could just send them a copy of the Bible and they could figure it out. 52% <laughs> of the people surveyed understands that's where you're going to find the morals, what's right and what's wrong, what's moral or immoral. It's important because it's encouraging. We have a program, you got to check it out, you know, uh, law versus uh, morality. morality. And it's the first thing we're taught in law enforcement that just because it's legal don't mean it's moral, and just mm -hmm. because it's moral doesn't mean it's, it's legal. legal. Yeah. And so they don't necessarily have to cross. And we as Christians, and, and look, I mean, they're looking for AI, they're looking for morals. I mean, they're coming, their first number one thing on their agenda is the, how, what is the, how do you morally use artificial intelligence? The only way you're going to find that other than making up your own morals is it, it's through it's the, the Word, Word of God. God. And Word so this God. is why it's so important. What else are some of the ways they see it? 38% describe the Bible as a historical account. 38%. See, that's why I was concerned about putting yeah. the Bible in a museum because they go, oh, that's so, I, oh, I, I saw the dinosaurs and I saw the book of Genesis. Yeah. Right? By yeah, the well, antiquity. Yeah. Right? I'll, ho hopefully it would inspire more people to read the Bible, not just yes. look at it from a For a living document. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. House. 37% consider it helpful for today. Yeah, that's me. I can yeah. imagine. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? No. I mean, I mean that's. And, and it's every day, you know, every day. It's not, I, I got to read the Bible, right. but it's, I get to. You know, so, you know, a lot of people, it's overwhelming at first, especially if you're around a whole bunch of people who profess to be Christians that never even touch their Bible. But when I tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, tell you, oh yeah, don't argue with them about it. But, you know, they want to do it, maybe you want to do it, but you just don't have a plan. Well, guess what? We have a plan that we want to give you for free. It's a simple plan. It's not complicated. A lot of things you see out there are so complicated. Mm -hmm. It's a simple plan that even children are able to do it. It's abiding with God. Jesus said in, in uh, John 15, uh, the book of John, chapter 15, He said this. He says, you can do nothing outside of abiding with Him. But if you abide in me and I, I abide in you, He says, you can do anything. Everything can, is possible. And so that spending time with God, part of that is reading Scripture. And you can combine that in an abiding experience with God. It does take a long time, but we have a plan for you. It's free. It's right there for you. It's at iabide.org. Like you have an iPad, an iPhone, iTalk, iNotes. Now you have an iabide. It's at iabide.org. You fill out the little simple information, and right away it comes to you immediately in your email and you can immediately begin to abide. It's just step by step how to do it, and it will just change your life forever. That's how we're able to do television and, and <laughs> Seven Mountains exactly. and all the things that we do. It's amazing exactly because we spend that abiding time with the Lord, and out of the overflow of that, you know that we're able to do this. And so, Bible reading is a part of abiding. It's not all of abiding. So once you understand, I'm not just going to read my Bible and intellectually experience it, but I'm going to experience God. When I'm reading and that's it. the key is experiencing yeah. God. It's an invitation right. to know Him more. Right. And it's not so much about 
the, the quantity, how much you read, but right. it's about what you're reading and allowing you know, that, the Word of God to really speak to your heart. So I would encourage you to go to iabide.org and get that. And I want to continue this, but I just thought about you. Oh, know, yeah. That's so important. Sure. Mm -hmm. Continue on with, with this poll, 36% describe the Bible as true. This is, this mm. is the respondents, the ones that they surveyed. And so we'd like to have seen that number higher. We know that it's true. It's, tr it's the truth. Yeah. I mean, God is truth. Mm. I mean, if you, God looked at a green tree and he said, that tree's brown. Guess what? It's brown. It's brown. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jesus walked past a fig tree that wasn't, didn't have any fruit on it, had leaves on it. And he said, that tree will not bear fruit again. Mm. And, and once, that, once that happened, once that happened, um, it just shriveled up and it went away. And that was within 24 hours. They were just mesmerized by that. Let's cover these stats. Cool. Sure. 35% like uh, considered it life-changing. 34% considered it a story. 14% considered it outdated. 8% bigoted. 7% harmful. 11% not sure. And 3% none of these. Well, listen, you can change that in your life today. You can say, you know, I'm going to go to the store. Or I'm going to download on my phone the Bible. And I'm going to begin to abide with the Lord. Reading the Word, hiding His Word in our heart, uh, talking to God, listen to what He says, and do what He impresses on you to do. And you can find that simple plan at iabide.org. You can change this. You cannot be a part of the negative aspects of these statistics, but the positive part of it. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.